Good morning and welcome to A Finch's Nest Podcast. My name is Heather and I will be your host today. I am coming to you today from just outside of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. And today it is very sunny, but very cold still. We've had a few uh, spring-like days, but today's not one of them. (laughs) So um, hopefully spring will be here soon and we'll be here to stay. I'm going to try podcasting today, even though everybody's home. So hopefully um, I won't have too many interruptions and it won't be too noisy in here. Um, Just like everybody else, we are uh, adjusting with our new normal of COVID. And, um, you know, I'm not going to talk a lot about COVID because I'm sure everybody's tired of hearing about it, but it's kind of hard to do a podcast right now without at least mentioning it. Um, We're doing good at our house. We are fortunate enough not to be frontline workers. Um, My one son is considered an essential worker, but he's not in an industry where he's at any sort of risk. So um, we're grateful for that. So for us, it's mostly just getting used to being home all the time and having the kids home from school and trying to um, do some educational things with them. Um, And, you know, hopefully they keep up on their schoolwork. But um, yeah, that's that's always a challenge. So um, otherwise, we're doing well and we're healthy. So grateful for that. So I think the hardest part for me with um, this whole COVID thing, um, obviously the, the lives that are lost is heartbreaking, but for us personally, the hardest part is not being able to see family. So, um, we haven't seen my, my daughter and my son-in-law and my granddaughter. Um, we haven't been able to spend any sort of time with them. We have seen them through the window or, um, my daughter came to drop some stuff off so we were able to visit through the car window so we've seen them that way but it's just we are really anxious to spend some time with them and especially Annie she's changing so much and she's getting so big and I just feel like we're missing it all so so that's the hardest part for us for sure so but other than that we're keeping busy at home Um, I decided this would be a great opportunity to tackle some projects around the house that you know, are hard to fit in when you're working and doing all the normal day-to-day stuff. So um, I decided to renovate my basement. So it's a big project. Um, most of my basement is finished. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a big undertaking. <laughs> so um, I had been looking back in the winter to have someone come in and help me do some of this work, but it just didn't work out. And so I thought, well, I've got time now. I'll just get it done myself. So that's what I've been working on. So I've been doing a lot of painting, but also a lot of organizing and getting rid of things that we're not using anymore. So I'm really excited for the finished product and just to have it all organized and looking much better. It's, you know, it's a really nice space, but it just looked really tired and needed a nice fresh coat of paint and I'm going to um, redo the banister down there and redo the mantle on the fireplace. And then also we have gutted the bathroom. So I've bought uh, new fixtures for the bathroom. So that'll be nice to have that done and looking a little nicer. So we're kind of at a standstill right now because we actually discovered a little bit of a leak in the bathroom. So I'm waiting till I can have a repairman come in and have a look at that before we go any further. So that's holding us up a little bit but that's okay other than that um just a quick date update on my little granddaughter annie for those of you who haven't heard me talk about her before she is almost three months old already and you know like i said we've missed about half of that (laughs) so it's kind of hard but we do facetime with her and my daughters get to send photos and videos and stuff so she's She's discovered that she has a little voice and she loves to uh, talk a lot. So that's really cute to see her. She gets very passionate about what she's saying when she's talking. So it's really cute. And then uh, she, the other day she rolled over for the first time. So that's exciting. So she's definitely doing very well and she's growing well and 
she's just adorable. So I really miss her and can't wait to spend some time with her. So other than that, I guess I should have told you where you can find me on the internet. So you can find me on Instagram at a finch's nest. I haven't been terribly active lately because I'm in the middle of this renovation project, but, um, hopefully soon I'll have some more content for there and I have lots of uh, little knitting projects coming up that I can be sharing over there so that'll be fun so yeah you can find me at a finch's nest over there and I also have a Ravelry group which I'm not very active in but you can join over there if you would like as well so if you just go on to Ravelry and search in the groups tab for a finch's nest you'll be able to find us there so um, I also do have an Etsy store, but right now I have that temporarily closed because um, with all the social distancing stuff, um, I didn't want to be going to the post office. So um, just trying to do my part to stay home. So right now I just have it temporarily closed until uh, things are a little safer and um, it's just a little easier to get out to the post office. So I do actually have lots to show you today because it has been a long time <laughs> since I last podcast. So um, yeah, I have a little bit of sewing and lots of knitting and it's funny because when I was planning to do the podcast I thought I don't really have much to show <laughs> but I think I had a couple bigger projects and so it just kind of felt like I didn't have as much but I think I do have more than I originally thought I did. <laughs> so um Oh, one other thing I, I did want to mention just before we get into the knitting. So I decided to make myself a mask because um, just for when I go grocery shopping and that, it's just that little extra level of protection or layer of protection, I guess. Um, so anyways, I made myself this mask. And of course, if you have to wear a mask, it should be pretty, right? So I made this pretty floral mask. So when I finished it, I thought, oh, you know, I wonder if there's some people in my community who might need one. I'm going to post it on a local mom's group on Facebook and see if anyone needs one. And thinking, you know, maybe a couple of people might might want one. <laughs> so anyways, it was um, it was a Saturday, I think. Saturday morning, I posted, you know, if anyone needs one, please let me know. I'd be happy to make you one. Um, and then I made the mistake of walking away from my computer for about an hour and I came back and I had over a hundred messages all with orders for masks so I quickly shut down the comments on the post and started to panic <laughs> so anyways as I was going through all these orders for masks I was realizing that a lot of these orders were for like some of them were for 10 masks but most were for like four or five and I thought oh my goodness how am I ever gonna make all these masks so I thought, well, I'm just going to have to start one at a time. So I started going through the list one at a time, filling each order. And I quickly realized like this is going to take me weeks to get through this. So I messaged a friend who also sews and asked her if she'd be interested in helping me do this. And so what I had done too is um, I just told people like I didn't set a price for the mask. I just said that you could give a donation. So um so anyway, so people were happy to do that. So I asked her if she'd be willing to help and, you know, I could give her some fabric and um, she had lots of fabric at home. And anyway, she graciously agreed to help me <clears throat> make the mask. So she took a lot of the orders, which was great. And then my daughter and her husband, they decided to get on board and help as well. So anyways, between the three of us, we made over 350 masks. So within a week. <clears throat> So it was a little intense <laughs> and I don't want to make any more masks. So I think for myself, I made 165 of them and you know, I'm good. I'm good for a while. So I'm happy I was able to help out and so many people in the community were so grateful. So that was really fun and it was really nice, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely over the masks for right now anyways. Um, and also because I have this big renovation project going, I just needed to get back to that. So anyway, so I've made a lot of masks in the last couple of weeks and I'm really glad I was able to help people out that way because I know that they did really appreciate it. So that was good. Okay, now into the knitting. So I'm going to start with finished objects. And the first one is my sweater, which is finally finished. So it's actually been finished for a while now, but I just haven't had time to podcast. But I'm pretty sure last podcast it was not finished. Anyways, this is the Night Crew sweater, which it looks a little cockeyed, but 
it's not. <laughs> um, I think maybe it's because I have this microphone clipped on. Um, this is the Night Roof Sweater by Isabel Kramer. And I did this as a test knit for her. And I could not love this sweater more. I always said I would never knit myself a fingering weight sweater. But now that I've done it, oh, I would knit so many more. I don't, you know, it's a long process because it takes a long time. But the finished product, it's so light, but it's so warm. And it's just the nicest fabric. So anyways, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I would totally knit this sweater again. I was actually even thinking of just knitting it in um, just all one color because I just like the way it fits. It just, it's such a good design. It's such a good fit. It's got like lots of short rows so the neck fits properly and it's just the perfect sweater. So anyway, so the yarn that I used for this was um, by On The Round and it's in her, what was it? Uh, plush four ply and this is the colorway mm, Eclipse and this is Robin's Egg and they're beautiful yarns I was actually thinking I wish I had a sweater quantity of this this would make a beautiful sweater but like most people right now we're not spending money on <laughs> nice things like this but maybe someday it would be a beautiful sweater. Anyway, so I have a little bit left over, so I'm happy about that. And I'm just absolutely thrilled with the finished product and I wear it a lot. And it's just so nice to throw on like in the evening when I'm feeling chilly, because it's just so light and oh, so nice, so nice. So anyways, this is the pattern here. So, and I would highly, highly recommend that pattern. I have not knit any of her patterns in the past, but I definitely will knit more because her patterns are very well written and lots of great shaping. I I don't like sweaters that don't have nice neck shaping and this has like the perfect amount of neck shaping. And I also like the neck because it doesn't have like a ribbing. It just has this nice little detail at the top. So it's nice. It just fits nice and it's not like tight up against your throat. So yeah. No, I'm super happy with how that turned out. So yeah, it's nice to have a nice sweater in my wardrobe. Now, funny thing is, since I finished it, I guess it was, when was it that I finished it? Like the end of February? So I really haven't been able to wear it out in public at all. <laughs> so I have this beautiful sweater now, but I can't wear it anywhere. So that's okay. I wear it at home and it's nice and warm. So anyways, super happy with this. And I am really considering making another one but without the color work just using this uh this pattern for the shaping and everything so highly recommend so my next finished object i don't have to show you but i will try to insert a photo and it's a little sweater that i made for annie so just before uh this whole covid thing happened um i had had a, a shower for katie and for annie and it was actually the Sunday before we were told to stay home. So it couldn't have been better timing. But anyways, so as part of her gift for the shower, I bought her this adorable dress for her Easter dress, thinking, you know, that we would be going to church and that we would have a family Easter dinner and she would need a beautiful dress to wear. But she got to wear her beautiful dress at home with her mommy and daddy instead. So anyways, I knew because um, the weather would be you know, still chilly that she'd need a little sweater to go with her, her pretty dress. So I made an adorable sweater and um, it's from this book, King Cole book. And I've decided that I really love these books. Their designs are adorable and the shaping of their sweaters is excellent. I just, I really have a thing for, a, I find a lot of sweaters nowadays have no proper neck shaping and things don't fit properly. And I've seen people, like I've looked at different patterns on Ravelry and you can see the photos of the finished product and the, the neck of a sweater is coming straight across here and I think that can't be comfortable. So I really love sweaters with proper neck shaping, even for babies. And this book does. 
well all these books do so anyways it's in this book here which is I don't know if they have numbers baby book number five and the sweater I made is this one here except that I made it with short sleeves instead of long sleeves it's so cute <laughs> And the nice thing about these books is they go up to age seven. So I'm, I'll be able to make her more of these as she gets bigger. And it's the perfect little sweater. It's hard to see the little detail around the bottom, but it's a perfect sweater to go over the little dresses. So anyways, I knit it in this pink yarn, which I had in my stash, which is getting blown out, of course. It's just a really soft baby pink. And it's the Vintage DK by Barocco. And the color number is 2110. I've had this for quite a while in my stash, so it was nice to use it up. And I didn't even use a whole, this is, this is a full skein. The other one fell on the floor. <laughs> but I didn't even use a full skein to do the little sweater because it is a little bit cropped and it was short sleeves. So, so I have this full skein and a half so I can knit her another sweater easily. So I might make her a little pullover or something for the winter. But um, that that pattern I would highly recommend. It, it turned out really cute and it was so easy and so fast. It was really a fun knit. So I definitely will make her more of those uh, just in different colors. And I might make a little red one for the fall because I picked up a little dress for her that is blue and red. So. I might make a little red one so that's another pattern I would highly recommend so hopefully I can insert a picture and you can see how pretty she looked in her little sweater um, if I can't there is a picture of her wearing it on my Instagram so you can see that there so another finished object is another sweater for myself so I did another test knit this one was for the city limit sweater by Tannis of Tannis Fiber Arts. So this is, um, as you can see, is a fade, which I have actually never done a fade before. So I thought, you know, this is a good time to push myself to do something that I hadn't done before. Um, I, I wouldn't say I, I'm not a fade person. I've learned, I've learned that I'm not. I, I really like like a solid or a color work sweater like this. This is my, what I prefer, I guess. Um, I did find it very difficult doing a fade and I don't know if it's just <clears throat> my personality. Like I, ju I just want things right. <laughs> so, so I ripped out a lot and I, you know, it's hard to see the fade. I was trying to fade from light to dark and sometimes it got too dark too fast. So then I'd rip it back and then I would try to find something else. And of course, because it's COVID time and you can't go to the store and pick up what you're looking for. I was trying to work through my stash and I, I was trying to do it just as the pattern says with five different yarns, which in hindsight, I would have run out of yarn for sure because I did use more than the five. But um, yeah, I was trying to do it as the pattern called for and like the, the sequencing of fading and stuff. And then finally, in the end, I just kind of did my own thing. And then, um, yeah, but I just really struggled with, I think I just wanted it <clears throat> perfect, which I think with a fade, you kind of have to let that go. <laughs> so anyways, here's my sweater. So as you can see, it does now fade from light to dark. And there's certain parts of it that I love and there's certain parts that I, yeah, I'm not so sure. I like the pattern, the pattern's fun, and it has this. So you can either wear this sweater um, with the stocking, stocking stitch side showing or the reverse stock stitch. So I just preferred this, especially with the fade. I think if it wasn't a fade, I might prefer the other side, but because it's a fade, I just, I feel like it, it does fade a little nicer on the reverse side. Yeah, and then you have this little detail along the the sleeve there so yeah i i really struggled with this <laughs> so this is the kind of sweater i will probably wear it a lot around the house because it's warm and it's 
cozy. I probably won't wear it out though. It's a little too, maybe, I don't know, flashy is the word, but it's a little too, I don't know, colorful maybe for my liking for what I would wear out. To wear this sweater, I would wear this sweater anywhere. So anyways, I'm glad I did it and I'm glad I stretched myself to do a fade, but I'm not in a hurry to do a fade again. Now I would totally knit this sweater again in just like a solid color or just like um, a tonal or something. But yeah, I just think maybe this many colors is too much for my <laughs> my standard uh, like of a sweater, I guess. So anyways, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out and I have worn it a few times in the evenings and it is really nice and warm. But I just think I'm not a fade person and that's okay. And lots of people are, lots of people love it. I just, it's not for me, I don't think. Anyways, that was a City Limits sweater. And I know this was available for a while for free on Ravelry. I don't think it is anymore. But anyways, it's two strands of a fingering weight held together for this. Or you could use one strand of worsted, which is probably what I would do next time if I was to knit this again. I was also thinking of knitting this for Annie in a cute little, um, colorful uh, yarn but we'll see I have lots of sweaters I want to knit for Annie so we'll see if I have time for that one so anyway so that was another finished object and this is my little basket of all the yarns that are left from that so I can give you a little rundown of some of them so this is the very darkest one which was just a Regia sock yarn that I had and the color is 02747 and then Here's all the little scraps that are left, so not much at all. And I know it's, I've heard it said from other people who've knit the sweater that they did run out of yarn. So um, definitely, if you're doing that, I would get six skeins, not five. So some of the yarns that I used, one is the Artville Belle in the Brewing colorway. I love her yarns, she has beautiful colors. And then I had Lizzie Ann yarns in the Vintage Petals color. And Manos del Uruguay Alegria in the color hmm, A9453. And then I also had the yarns of Richard DeVries in Tonight's the Night colorway. Now this one says it's a DK, but this is the one that I originally put in my um, The Snuggle is Real Cal, and I kept thinking that it it was mislabeled. I didn't really think it was a fingering weight yarn. So I used that, and I used another Lusianne, which the eggplant colorway. Ooh, can't see that. <laughs> it's very sunny today. <laughs> So I do, I love their yarns too. As you can see, because there's another one, this is one of their older ones, Lizzie Ann in the Berries and Cream sock set. So yeah, those are all the yarns that I used for that. And yeah, I'm happy to have two new sweaters in my wardrobe, so that's nice. And I do have other sweaters that, sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, I do have some other sweaters that I do want to make for myself. But it's just, I have more sweaters I want to knit for Annie, and her sweaters knit up a lot faster than mine, so she, uh, she's more fun to knit for. So what else do I have for finished objects? Oh, I have this one. So I knit another sweater for Annie. So, so far I've knit the little pink one that I made her to come home from the hospital in, and it's starting to get a little small now. And then I knit the this pink one that I just talked about. Um, so then I thought maybe she just needed like a little white one to wear with anything. Um, and then just something with the w weather getting a little warmer that she could just wear almost like a little coat when she goes outside. So I had this pattern from forever ago <laughs> and it's by Sirdar and it's pattern number 1787. So this cute little coat. Now, it to me it looks a little bit dated, 
but I thought it was really cute. I just didn't really like the collar or the little bow. So I thought, well, I'll just leave the bow off. And originally I was going to do the collar, but then I ended up not. So here's the little sweater all finished. Now, I would say it's fine. It's fine. And it will keep her warm. And it's perfect for what I intended. But I'm actually not, sorry, I'm not thrilled with how it turned out. I feel like, and maybe it's just my, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I feel like it looks really wide for the length. And if you look in the pattern, it looks like it's like a little long coat. So in my mind, it should have been a lot longer than wider. And yet it, it seems very wide for the length. So maybe when it's on her, it will look different, but it just doesn't seem very long or as long as I was expecting it. Anyways, anyways cute little sleeves this yarn's cute it's got little flecks of pink and purple in it and I just put some little white buttons on so it's cute it'll keep her warm for the spring the yarn I used was the Sirdar Snuggly four ply hard to see and like I said it has just little Flex of pinks and purples in it. So this is an acrylic yarn, of course, which mm, <laughs> once you've worked with wool, it's hard to go back. But it is very soft and it would be nice for her. But uh, yeah, so I'm happy to have that done. So I'll drop this off this week at some point so she can start wearing it. And hopefully it'll fit her for a little while. It doesn't look very big, but hopefully it'll fit for a bit. So there you go. Okay, my next almost finished object is these little placemats. So I made two of them. So it's my daughter's birthday next week. And of course, with COVID, <laughs> we can't go shopping for gifts. So <clears throat> I had to get creative this year. So um, I did order her a cookbook off of Amazon, which I know she'll be super happy about. Um, but then I thought yesterday, you know, what if I used up some scraps and made some cute little placemats just to brighten up their little apartment for spring. So I made these. So as you can see, I just have to add a binding around the edge still. So, um, yeah, so they're just cute little spring placemats and hopefully they'll bring a little cheer to their apartment during this <laughs> awful COVID time. So I thought I would give her these with the cookbook some flowers and then I also put together a little kit for her to make a little cross stitch so yeah I'm just waiting for something in the mail that I ordered for, to finish that but then and then I'll just put some binding on these probably tonight and those will be ready for her so hopefully she likes those and then I just put a nice yellow on the back so yeah so some cute placemats for her so I think that's it for finished objects. So next are my works in progress. So I do actually have a few and I have a few things that I want to start. So yeah, it's going to be busy knitting time. And of course with COVID, we all have a little more time for this kind of stuff, don't we? So that's kind of nice. So the first thing I have is in this bag, this amazing bag. So I've done a swap with um, Aruna from Buku before so she likes naturally dyed yarns for her um projects and for her needle punch and so her and i had done a, a swap about a year ago and i had got one of her little bucket totes and then i sent her yarn and so this year we did another swap and this is the amazing bag that i got which i love and it's got handles and a crossbody bag uh, strap so this is a fun a fun bag so I love doing swaps with other makers it's it's a lot of fun so anyways my project in here right now is the night shift by Andrew Mary and I've just started I have not got very far at all so a friend of mine that I go to knit night with she actually had purchased the yarn to make this 
and was finding the worsted weight yarn is very hard on her hands when she's knitting it. And so she was looking to rehome this kit that she put together to make the night shift. So I was the lucky one who got it. So, um, and her and I have very similar taste in color, so that's great. So anyways, this is as far as I've gotten. So not far at all, but I can tell that I'm gonna love this project. It's very soft and squishy and kind of a very um, easy knit, really. So here are some of the colors that she had chosen. So there's purple and gray, and there's a blue, and these yarns, they're just by Cascade, but they they have different coloring in them. So they fade from lights to darks or, you know, from more solid to more mottled. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a really uh, perfect yarn for, for this project. So this nice teal color. And what else? <laughs> this purple is darker with a little bit of gray in it, I guess. And there's one more. <laughs> oh, a nice fuchsia color. Yeah, so these are really definitely my colors. So I'm going to enjoy making this. And I'm going to enjoy this finished object. I just know it. So I'm looking forward to getting back to that. I've been a little distracted with any knitting. But um, I'm definitely going to get back to this. And I just want to get on into the rhythm of it. And then I think it'll just be kind of mindless after that. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on there. Starting to run out of room to put things here on the floor. <laughs> so, um, okay, something else that I'm working on is a sweater for Annie. So I am now thinking ahead to fall. So um, I think with that little white sweater that I just made, she should be fine for summer now. And now I wanna start working on some fall and winter knits for her. So the first one I started was the antler cardigan. So I had made this for myself a couple years ago and I really liked the pattern. So they also have a pattern for the matching hat. So I'm gonna make her the set. And I thought this would just be a nice sweater to wear they're going out for a walk or whatever in the fall. So I started the sleeves. I have both sleeves done. And they're just, they're so cute. <laughs> they're so little. Uh, so I just did a very neutral color because I thought um, she could wear this with anything. And it'd be really nice for the fall. And um, yeah, so will just go with whatever she's wearing. So those are the two sleeves and then, and I knit these so fast because it's a worsted weight sweater and it's so tiny. I'm doing this six to 12 months size for her because she'll be like seven months in September. So I think it's a good, good size for her. And then um, I started the body last night. So I am zooming through this sweater. So I think I just started this two evenings ago and I've only been working on it in the evening. So <laughs> it's really knitting out very quickly. So yeah. So the yarn I'm using for this is this Red Heart Chic Sheep, which is a line that Red Heart has that is 100% wool, which who knew? <laughs> so I had picked this up at Michael's back in the summer they had it on sale. Actually, I think they had it on clearance. So um, it is 100% wool, but it does not feel like wool. It's very soft. So I thought it would be perfect for her. And I have a few balls, so I have enough to do the hat and the sweater. So I'm excited about this. I think it'll it'll be nice, and she'll probably get a lot of use out of that because um, it's just a very neutral sweater. So I keep all of her knits in my little Red Riding Hood bag because it's girly and it's just for Annie now. <laughs> so that's where I have all her little, her little knits. So something else I wanted to cast on for Annie is another one of these Rigmore's bonnets. So I made her one of these um, when she was a baby. And, oh, she still is a baby. <laughs> when she was a tiny baby. And it's actually the hat that Katie wore on her the most. It just 
fit her so nicely and it didn't fall off and because it ties under their chin let's see uh it just never moves where a lot of like just pull on toques they kind of end up in their eyes or whatever this one fits so well so anyways it doesn't fit anymore so she's outgrown it already so she needs a new one so i'm gonna make one out of this snuggly by sirdar which i had in my stash in this pretty rosy pink color and then I thought, if I get this done, she could wear it with this little sweater. And that would be a cute little set for the spring. So yeah, I was gonna cast that on tonight, I think, just so I can get it done and drop it off when I drop off the little sweater this week and Katie's birthday presents and stuff. So at least I have an excuse to go over and have a window visit this week. <laughs> so that's good. Um, other than that, I... I have one more thing, which I have to reach it over here. One more project that I was thinking of for Annie for the fall, and it's in this Sirdar book. This book I got at um, one of my knitting groups that I go to. They do like a D-stash sale every year where other members donate things that they're not using anymore, and then they sell them really cheap to raise money for the guild. And somebody had donated this book, I think two years ago, and so I paid like a dollar for this book. <laughs> but anyways, um, I really like this one sweater in here. This one here. I thought it was really cute. It does have a bit of a retro feel to it, but it is cute. Here it is here with a collar on it, but I like it without the collar. So I'm going to knit this one for Annie in this color here. And again, this is one of my favorite yarns, the Barocco Ultra Wool DK. And this is color number 83153. So I think this is a nice color for fall. It's not showing up exactly. That's better. Um, but yeah, I thought it'd be a nice color for fall. Nice and girly still, <laughs> but a little darker for fall. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to casting that on as well. So she should have lots of little sweaters. There was one other one um, in this book, which is another one of these King Cole books. Love these books. Um, this little sweater here, which is showing on a little boy, I thought would be really cute for fall as well, just in a solid color like that. I think I have some purple in my stash downstairs that would work in this cute little hat look yeah so that's another one that i was thinking of just things that she can wear all the time to keep her cozy and warm in the winter <laughs> so yeah so those are some of my projects that i'm working on or wanting to work on so yeah there's no shortage of knitting over here so i am happy about that and i'm really happy that i have a stash of yarn so, um, yeah, and a stash of fabric so I can make things even though we can't be getting out to stores and stuff. So, yeah, I'm happy for my stash for sure. Um, I've also, there's a, a group of ladies in town right now that are making uh, hospital gowns and the surgical caps for doctors and nurses. And um, because I'm doing the, the renovation project, I didn't really want to just spend too much time sewing those kinds of things so instead I was able to donate some fabrics and elastic and stuff for the projects that they were working on so that was good so again it's nice to have a stash for these kinds of emergencies <laughs> so anyways they have done a lot and they are amazing ladies they have sewn so many so many hospital gowns it's crazy and they have um they have it set up so there's one lady who organized the whole thing and um, she has quite a team working for her now and there's a local print store in town and they do a lot of like printing for different companies and stuff so of course they don't have a lot of business right now and so they're actually printing out the patterns for everybody like the full size patterns so and they'll drop them off at people's houses if they are interested in sewing the gowns and then when people are finished sewing the gowns, they let this coordinator know that their gowns are ready. 
And then they have the St. John's ambulance drives around town in an ambulance picking up all the the hospital gowns that are complete and stuff. So it's actually really amazing, really, what they have done and how many things that they've been able to make. So it's great. And, you know, I think right now it's good for people to have a project and, you know, people are feeling like they're helping in some way because it feels like a helpless situation in a lot of instances. It's just especially for people like myself who don't, like if I was a nurse, I would feel like I am, you know, I'm out there and I'm helping, right? But um, for for most of us who are just being asked to stay at home, um, I think it's nice to have projects where you feel like you're accomplishing things and where you're helping. And so, yeah, I think it's good. And I think for myself, and I know everybody's different and every personality is very different, but I think for myself, having the renovation project to work on has been a lifesaver in a lot of ways. Um, I'm very excited to get up in the morning and get working on my project. And I'm, you know, I feel very motivated. I feel excited and energetic about it. And so I think that's really good in a time like this when um, my daughter's distracting me constantly. <laughs> Um, when uh, life is just kind of up in the air so um, yeah so I hope that um, you're finding things to bring you comfort at this time and um, things that you're excited about and you know that you're just finding your way through this very trying time and you know <clears throat> I think it's a good time for all of us to learn to show ourselves a lot of grace and show others a lot of grace because uh, it's definitely not something that, you know, this is not the life that we're used to. This is not what any of us anticipated. And so, you know, trying to find a new normal is not always easy. Yes. So I hope you're finding some joy and some rest at this time. And, you know, I think when we look at these times and we <clears throat> we try to look, sorry, <clears throat> when we look at these times and we try to see the positive in these times, there, you know, there's a lot to be really thankful for right now, especially for those of us who are just being asked to stay home. You know, we are fortunate that we are not the ones out there <clears throat> on the front lines. And, um, you know, we're just being asked to stay home. And I have been trying to look at some of the positives of this situation and some of the things that I have learned are, you know, we are really fortunate right now to have a season of rest and a time when we can be home and we can get things done that often don't get done. We can spend more time with those who live in our home. We can enjoy just the simple, simple things of life. And we're not rushing to all these commitments that we normally have. And, you know, oh, just even in the mornings, rushing to get the children out the door to school and on the bus and get to work and all these different things that we have to do normally. Now we're just getting a chance to breathe and to take a little bit of a rest. So I hope that you're able to enjoy that. I know for some, this is just extremely difficult. And for those who've a family who are affected by this obviously this is a very very difficult time and so you know my thoughts and prayers are with you because this is definitely not an easy time I think for my family thankfully we are all healthy and we are all very happy to be at home right now and enjoying this time of rest um, but I know for some families they have really been affected by this and it's terrible. It's terrible. And hopefully this will all be over very soon. And um, we can try to get back to a, a more normal life. I don't think we're ever going to have the life that we had before. I think things have forever changed, but um, maybe for the good in a lot of ways. So we can hope for that at this point. So anyways, I hope that you're doing well and staying healthy and getting lots of crafting done with all your extra time. <laughs> And um, yes, that you stay safe and healthy. So I am heading off now to a virtual meeting for camp because of course we need to make some decisions as to how to move forward with that for the summer because again, everything is up in the air and very unknown as to 
how this is all going to pan out for the summer. So we are having a meeting very soon. So hopefully we can make some sort of decisions. And again, some of these decisions are completely out of our hands because uh, the government makes a lot of those sort of decisions on gatherings and stuff like that. So we're just kind of waiting to see. So anyways, I hope you're doing well and getting lots of knitting time. And hopefully this video was not too all over the place. Um, I got up early this morning thinking I'd get up before the kids got up. I would get this done so that I wouldn't be interrupted. And I got up early and my daughter was awake. <laughs> She's never awake this early. And so I made it very clear to her that I did not want to be interrupted. And she has interrupted me so many times. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, this has been crazy. So this is why I do this when they're at school. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully it wasn't crazy and hopefully you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on and, um, and hopefully I'll be updating my Instagram a little more regularly once this big renovation project's over. Anyways, take care and have a great day and try to make the best of your stay at home time and just try to enjoy the season of rest. Take care. Bye.